The following video was recorded by the Half Moon Bay Coastside Chamber of Commerce on October 7, 2020. Its contents may not necessarily express the views of Pacific Coast TV. All right, good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Shepard. I'm uh, with the Half Moon Bay Chamber of Commerce. I'm on the Government Affairs Committee. I'm with uh, Crystal and Geek the executive director, and uh, I'd like to thank the three of you for joining us tonight for this uh, members candidate forum. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said that whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government, and having uh, forums just like this is a way to keep the population well informed so they can make a proper choice when they are voting. Um, the way we're going to be doing tonight's forum is we're going to give uh, all three candidates the time to do three minutes to do an intro. We're going to ask them eight different questions, and they're going to have one minute each to answer the question, and then we're going to have a uh, three minute outro. So, so to start off, uh, Kirsten Keith, I'm going to let you start off with a three minute intro about yourself. So go ahead. Great. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kirsten Keith and I'm uh, a candidate for the Harbor District and District 5 and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for hosting this this evening. Um, I'm running for the San Mateo County Harbor District because I love our beautiful county beaches and our harbors. Um, I'm running to protect the precious coastal and bay environment while supporting recreational opportunities and a strong, sustainable commercial fishing industry. I grew up windsurfing and sailing in San Mateo County, and during my undergraduate years at UC Santa Barbara, I had the pleasure of working on the scuba diving boats in the Santa Barbara Harbor, which I loved. Uh, I actually moved on to the boats after uh, I finished my undergraduate work in Santa Barbara and before going to law school, and found it a wonderful experience. Um, more recently, I was on the Bear Island Aquatic Center um, rowing, competitive rowing, out, having a master's rowing program at uh, the Redwood City Port, and I thought that was fabulous. Love being out on the water. I'm an avid backpacker, um, and I have a law practice in Redwood City for over 20 years. My eight years of experience on the Menlo Park City Council, two as mayor, um, my seven years as a Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency Director, and my seven years as director of the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority. I was a, a director on that as well. Um, illustrate my commitment to public service and make me uniquely qualified for this. Um, and this is the first time that we've had district elections, so that's exciting as well. Um, especially pertinent to the harbor district position, I've dealt with sea level rise and flooding issues. And as, director, as a director on the San Francisco Creek, Creek Joint Powers Authority, we completed a $76 million flood control project um, to prevent the city of East Palo Alto and over 1,000 homes from flooding. And I'm uh, very proud of that project. And now we're, the SFC JPA is working on the second phase now to prevent, uh, take people out of the flooding issues that are happening from uh, Highway 101 up to the Pope Chaucer Bridge in Menlo Park. Um, so thank you for having me. Oh, I get how many, I don't. I have more minutes, so I'll just keep talking. Um, I want to let you know I'm endorsed by uh, Jackie. I'm sorry for by Anna Eshu, Jerry Hill, um, Supervisor and former State Senator Joe Smidian, um, David Canapa, and many many other local leaders. And I have a website, KirstenKeith.com, and please feel free to go there um, to learn more about my candidacy. Um, I've published a number of papers on meet and medium. So there's articles that you can see um, that I published about why I'm running and uh, water quality issues um, and what my goals are for the Harbor District. And um, I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. And I was on mute. Kirsten, thank you very much. Virginia, you're up next. You have three minutes to describe yourself. Good evening, my name is Virginia Chain Crawley. I'm pleased to be running for re-election to the Harbor Board, but this time in District 5, since the Harbor Board voted to have district elections in 2018. Though not well known, the San Mateo County Harbor District is important because its responsibilities are substantial and about 65% of its revenues come from our property taxes. Those responsibilities include supporting San Mateo County's commercial fishing industry at Pillar Point, operating Oyster Point Marina and the ferry terminal in South San Francisco, water rescue, marine life protection, and clean water initiatives along the San Mateo County's coasts. 
I have had the honor of representing you and all San Mateo County residents as a Harbor Board Commissioner since 2015 and am privileged to be the incumbent in this election for the Harbor Board District 5 seat. I was appointed to the Harbor Board in November 2015 and ran for a full four-year term in a countywide election in 2016. Upon my election, I proudly became the first woman of color to be elected to the Harbor Board in the history of the Harbor District. I am currently the only commissioner and candidate in District 5 with a financial background, so I bring an important skill set of financial oversight necessary to act as a fiduciary of tax dollars, which fund capital projects that I have worked on during my tenure on the Harbor Board. Because of my financial background and my work as a trustee on the California State Parks Foundation Board for the last nine years and counting, I have been able to see the nexus between economic development and, and environmental sustainability, which was useful since the Harbor District is an independent enterprise district, which means it receives revenues from commercial and residential tenants, as well as our property taxes. As a former appointed commissioner on the California Commission for Economic Development, I have been interested in the various economic drivers in California, such as the biotech industry, agriculture, and park preservation for visitors. San Mateo County encapsulates all of these industries and the interests that must work together to shape our cities and the county from a revenue standpoint and an environmental sustainability standpoint. I look forward to a dialogue with you tonight and thank the Half Moon Bay and Coast Side Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to hear from you and to tell you more about my candidacy. To tell you a little bit about my background, I am a graduate from the University of Texas with a degree in government and a minor in economics. And I also have a master's of public administration from the University of Southern California. I love the outdoors. I love walking I, with my dog. I love the coastal trails. I love um, being on the coast side and also just being on the water. I also appreciate the fact that San Mateo County residents respect the environment that we live in and also respect the fact that we have to be able to fund projects so that we can work together to build a better and a sustainable San Mateo County. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Virginia. And now, Tom, you have three minutes to introduce yourself. Tom Matouche. Uh, I've been elected two terms for the Harbor District. I'm an incumbent. <clears throat> My background is I came to the Harbor District in about 1990. I have a license to operate vessels from the Coast Guard. I've run a number of different boats in the Harbor, uh, not only just uh, charter boats, but also commercial vessels. I sat on the regional working group and helped set up the marine reserves for the central and northern California coasts. I currently have the research science uh, assignment of monitoring in the reserves and out of the reserves through San Jose State University and Moss Landing Marine Lab. And currently uh, the new project was UC Davis and Bodega Marine Lab. <clears throat> so I'm uh, on the water quite a bit and eyes and ears on water quality and different changes in marine life and seeing firsthand as somebody that's on land and on the water quite a bit. My background includes an MBA in management. <clears throat> I've had some major corporate positions running diagnostic imaging centers, open heart surgery programs, cardiology departments and hospitals. <clears throat> I've had a cardiology practice in Texas, along with uh, the hospital and a nuclear medicine facility. Got a financial background that allows me to look at the revenue and the expense side and make decisions that are best for the organization. <clears throat> I've been uh, working out of the harbor for a long time. <clears throat> I've seen uh, what's going on since 1990 and I got interested in trying to put my hand on the steering wheel and say, how can I help make this better for the residents of San Mateo County and <clears throat> the people that are in the harbor, the leaseholders, the renters, the commercial fishermen, the recreational fishermen. I was part of a group, a founding member of Coastside Fishing Club. <clears throat> Coastside Fishing Club is the group that currently has the salmon acclimation pens. We are currently acclimating 750,000 salmon per year, and that's been a benefit for the commercial and the recreational anglers. 
of this area. <clears throat> I've got a couple of dogs that I love to walk on the bluffs and uh, have, show friends <clears throat> how beautiful these things are. Uh, water quality is a big topic to me, but I think we're going to address that a little later. <clears throat> so I look forward to getting your vote. Uh, my website is Tom for harbor.com. Please stop by, take a look, and get to know me better. All right, thank you, Tom. We're now going to move into the question portion of the uh, event. We're going to start off with Virginia. You're going to answer the question first, and then Tom, you're second, and Kirsten, you will be third. So question number one, Virginia, <clears throat> why did you choose to run for the commission as your path to improving the community? I decided to run for re-election because the Harbor District and the Harbor Ward need to have an experienced commissioner with a proven track record of accomplishments to continue providing consistent, stable, and ethical leadership during these unprecedented times of COVID-19 and the aftermath of the wildfires that have impacted San Mateo County residents, businesses, workers, public projects, and public budgets fostering a calm and productive workplace free from harassment and micromanagement by Harbor Board Commissioners so that the working environment is, is better for workers, helping guide the Harbor District's budget to be sustainable while funding public projects based on funding priorities set out in the Harbor District's or Harbor Board's strategic plan, and being on a solid track to get past the challenging board dynamics and unethical behavior by some of the Harbor Commissioners. I believe that my leadership and being reelected to the Harbor Board will put the Harbor District and Harbor Board on solid footing so that we can continue doing the people's business with integrity, transparency, and financial prudence. All right, Tom, why did you choose to run for the commission as your path to improving the community? The Harbor District has made a lot of um, gains and <clears throat> gotten a lot on a lot more firmer footing. When I was first running for office, I couldn't understand how people said that uh, <clears throat> the taxpayers are subsidizing the slip holders, for instance. Well, now, uh, after being on the board for a couple of terms, we have <clears throat> enterprise and non-enterprise funds. We can tell you what the leaseholders, the renters, uh, money goes for. We can tell you what the taxes go for to empty, to maintain the coastal trail and empty the trash. <clears throat> I want to continue a few more things that we've got going. We've got a capital improvement program, our dredge program that's been going on for a long time. There's certain things that I'd be really proud of just being participating and bringing that to conclusion. And uh, somebody with my experience uh, is the person that can do that for the voters, the leaseholders, the renters, and the tenants. All right, Kirsten. Why did you choose to run for the commission as your path to improving the community? Thank you. Hi. Um, I love our oceans and our beaches and our harbors, and I've always been a water person. Um, I lived in Redwood Shores previously and had a windsurfer and a sailboat growing up in high school and just loved being out on the water. And um, as I said, I, I got scuba, scuba diving certified when I was in high school as well, and then had the pleasure of working on scuba diving boats and um, I have a passion for the water. I, I think it's a wonderful place. I think that we're so lucky in San Mateo County to have these great harbors, both Pillar Point and Oyster Point, and um, access to the water. And I have um, written a couple of different articles um, about goals and priorities, but ensuring strong environmental stewardship is really important to me. Um, I have been on City Council in Menlo Park. I was on it for eight years, twice as mayor. We did do strategic plans and master plans, and I know that's something that's really important for the Harbor District to complete so that we have a real strong path forward. And um, I'm excited about being involved in that and enhancing public safety uh, at the Harbor. So thank you. All right, thank you. So now question two, we're gonna start with Tom and then move to Kirsten, and Virginia will be third for this question. So Tom. How will you balance being present for the many meetings and functions needed to participate in the commission while maintaining your other life and or job commitments? You're on mute, Tom. <laughs> That's not too big of a challenge for me since I, uh, when I'm working at the harbor, I'm in the harbor and I can also adjust my schedule, whether it's for uh, meetings or tours, helping the public learn more about the harbor. Um, my position now is to take people out and show them a good time. 
about the only job that could be better than mine is working in an ice cream store, giving people ice cream on a nice warm day. I take people out fishing now, whale watching, bird watching. Uh, there's nothing more rewarding than taking the public out and showing them a great time on the ocean. <clears throat> there's no uh, extra effort for me to either be in the harbor or to be in, in with uh, working with administration because I'm already there. <clears throat> it's where I live. It's where I work. I'm within walking distance of the harbor right now. And I love to see the plans develop and come forward regarding Oyster Point and how that's coming along and a t becoming the dream that was talked about 20 years ago. All right, thank you. Uh, Kirsten, how will you balance being present for the many meetings and functions needed to participate in the commission while maintaining your other life and or job community uh, commitments? Um, thanks for asking the question. Uh, I actually served on the Menlo Park City Council for eight years and we had many meetings and uh, I always made it work. You just make it work. Um, I think it's important to have the meetings at night so that you, if you have a day job, that you can participate and be involved. Um, and it's never been a problem. So I've been able to balance that. I've been on boards and commissions for over 25 years in our county. And I've been coming to Half Moon Bay and um, enjoying the coast since um, forever, really, and uh, all, all the time in high school. And now, and I love coming over now to go kayaking and um, just be out on the water. It's a wonderful place to be. I don't see it as a, as a problem, but something that's um, enjoyable. It's giving back to the community. I think I have a, a strong skill set to help out with the uh, important public things, policy issues that are coming forward for the Harbor District. So I don't find it um, a challenge. I find it something that um, is enjoyable to do. All right, Virginia. How will you balance being present for the many meetings and functions needed to participate in the commission while maintaining your other life and or job commitments? Well, thanks for the question, Brian. I've actually been doing this for the last five years. I serve on this board and another special district board, but I actually have more time now because I actually finally graduated with my master's from the University of Southern California in August. So I will have more time to do what I've already been doing, which has been serving the public. Um, I've been I've been very lucky and fortunate to be able to impart my skill set in um, my from my professional background in financial analysis, planning, and management, and I continue to do that. It's the highest priority, I believe, for any elected member of any public agency, and I'm very proud to be able to offer that as um, something that I can do and provide. I am a mother. I think that uh, when you're a mother and you used to work full time, you know, you be, you're able to balance things and balance a busy life. And as, as the saying goes, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. I'm very proud of my track record of really not having missing, missed really any meetings that were um, required of my being here. So I will look forward to continue my service. Thank you. Yeah. So Question number three. So for this one, we're going to start with Kirsten. We're going to, Virginia, you'll be going second, and Tom, you'll be going third. What is your plan for helping the economic recovery of the businesses within the harbor? How would you work towards engaging locals and visitors to the harbor to bring more business to the fishermen, restaurants, and shops? Okay, am I on mute? Uh, I think that the economic recovery is crucial. And when I come over now, I, I do see a lot of people, especially on the weekends, enjoying the restaurants. Um, and everybody's masked and being careful. And I think that's really important. Um, and it's great to see so many people coming to the harbor, coming to Johnson Pier, um, surfing, kayaking, coming to the restaurants. Uh, I think it's really, it's really great. And I think we have to keep up the CDC guidelines of social distancing, masking, um, making sure we're washing our hands. And then I know, you know, with the, working with the Chamber of Commerce to keep driving uh, people to the coast side. I love the articles that you have on your website. Um, and I, I noticed, you know, we just, uh, on the weekends right now, it's very crowded coming on over to the coast side for the pumpkin festivals. And everybody's really excited and coming back. And it's nice to see. And I think um, people want to come to the coast side. People love the San Mateo County coast side and want to come over there which is totally evident by 92 on the weekends. So I think just keeping up, helping the chamber promote what's going on there and promoting what's happening at the Harbor would, would, will help bring more business. All right, Tom, 
What is your plan for helping the economic recovery of the businesses within the harbor? How would you work towards engaging locals and visitors to the harbor to bring more business to the fishermen, restaurants, and shops? That's uh, exactly what I do for my business now <clears throat> when I'm bringing the fishermen in and letting them know where they can eat, where they can uh, shop. I have people asking me all the time, where can I buy fish? <clears throat> I've uh, helped participate uh, with sending people to the different commercial fishermen. <clears throat> I bring people to the harbor with my own business routinely. I give recommendations. <clears throat> I don't know how many people call me for a month and say, how can I buy fish? So I can't sell you fish. Here's an in individual that I work with that is more than happy to get you fish. I've worked with all the restaurants. I've worked with the shops in the past. <clears throat> I've helped many of the shopkeepers uh, with their business interests. My minor uh, through my MBA program was marketing. <clears throat> I've got a social media presence. I work with Coastside Fishing Club, 14,000 members. Uh, I have a presence there. So uh, as pointed out, we don't. We have to worry about uh, how to handle all of our traffic right now. All right, thank you. We're on to question number four. For this one, we're going to start with Virginia, and then Tom will be on. Brian. Oh, yes. I don't think I answered the economic recovery question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. Kristen, Tom. Ah, my apologies. Excuse me. That's okay. Sorry, Virginia. Uh, no what problem. is your plan, Virginia? What is your plan for helping the economic recovery of the businesses within the harbor? How would you work towards engaging locals and visitors to the harbor to bring more business to the fishermen, restaurants, and shops? Well, economic recovery is important to the Harbor District since about 35% of the Harbor District's revenues are from commercial business from our commercial tenants. Therefore, partnerships with um, organizations like the Half Moon Bay Seafood Marketing Association and the Chamber of Commerce are really important so that we understand you know, the, the business climate that we are in as the uh, climate continues to fluctuate. I am proud of my work with the staff and many of my fellow commissioners in dealing with two crises, the pandemic and the CZ lightning complex fire happening simultaneously with one exacerbating the other. We're still in an unpredictable situation with COVID-19 as you know, since it's still a part of our lives. Now that businesses are allowed to open, albeit slowly, the CDC guidelines of social distancing and wearing masks will be more important than ever. County and state guidelines will also be important to follow. The pier has painted stripes, for example, that mark the six foot distance for visitors, business, staff, and the public. The county also has uh, continues to mandate masks in certain public areas, which the Harbor District enforces. And lastly, the Harbor District is prepared to close its parking public parking lots if needed to ensure that the public residents and staff are safe. Um, as the only District 5 candidate having to face these unprecedented crises, I believe that my experience and leadership are needed more now than ever so that I can continue the work on the Harbor Board to help lead the COVID-19 recovery while taking measured steps to ensure that the public continues to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize for that. I missed That's okay. Mark my notes. So for question four, Virginia, you're going to be starting off. Tom, you'll be going second, and Kirsten will be going third. Uh, if we had another pandemic or like events during your term, what would you do to help with community safety? With community safety? Is that the... Yes. Okay. So unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic was a real issue that the Harbor District and Harbor Board have faced since mid-March when the shelter-in-place order became effective in California. As the only candidate in District 5 who dealt with this emergency, I'm very familiar with and support how the general manager has handled this crisis. With a fluid situation and facing having to shut down businesses that were not essential, the Harbor District and Harbor Board approved protocols that protected the district's residential tenants, the public, and the frontline Harbor Patrol staff. Following CDC guidelines was important, but what was equally important was working in concert with all levels of government based on state and county mandates, such as whether to close parking along Highway 1 or limit access to the public beaches by closing the Harbor District's public parking. Uh, while keeping in mind that these are all public spaces. So uh, while the slow reopening of businesses is beginning to happening, these guidelines and protocols will be more important than ever to follow. Um, honestly though, another pandemic may require different solutions. So if we're faced with different needs, at least these protocols will be put in place as a baseline. Thank you. All right, Tom, if we had another pandemic or like event during your term, what would you do to help with community safety? 
It, it, well, we have a good uh, sketch plan right now uh, in how we uh, social distance. We've closed the uh, entire Harbor District lands when we had to, to prevent people from coming over here. It's just such a draw to come to the coast. Uh, it's really challenging to say, hey, the harbor's shut down, you can't come in. We've uh, watched our harbor patrol turn people away unless you were actually a slip holder. <clears throat> the whole thing with uh, the social distancing, uh, how we disinfect things, but at the same time, we have to put a hand out to those that needed it. As an incumbent, I sat down and I worked with the fishermen and said, look, let's uh, develop a way. I found a model that worked out of San Francisco. I shared that because just because it's a shutdown doesn't mean that people have to stop working. They've got to maintain some sort of semblance of income. So the uh, disinfecting, social distancing, and who knows what's going to come up on the next one. All right, Kirsten, if we had another pandemic or like event during your term, what would you do to help with community safety? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I think a lot of the things that we've done so far have been really important. I think having CDC guidelines is crucial that, and that having everybody follow them. Um, I think also working with the sheriff's department. I mean, we saw that we had COVID-19 hit. And then, of course, the fires and evacuees from all from Santa Cruz County and San Mateo County. So there can be a lot of things to deal with at one time. Um, if, if something happens in the future, I think we'll have to look at to see uh, what parameters right now that we're using work well, or if we need to adopt different parameters. Some of the things we might be able to do if we have to shut down um, beaches, for example, is to allow people to actually have access to the water. So to surf or to kayak paddleboard be out in the water, but not on the beach, such as, you know, what happened during uh, COVID when Santa Cruz and San Mateo counties had times when they had to limit people coming and they didn't want people coming. So they closed the beaches until four or five in the afternoon. So there are different things we can do and, and that uh, we have to work on and the parking lots if the parking lots are full, turning people away or having minimal parking. You know, there are just different things we can do, but keeping social distancing, masking and cleanliness. All right, thank you. Question number five, we're gonna start with Tom. Kirsten, you're gonna be going second, and Virginia, you'll be going third. How would you improve the infrastructure of the harbor? No, uh, that's uh, an ongoing plan right now. <clears throat> we have uh, far greater plans. We know we've prioritized our capital improvement and our infrastructure. We're looking at different ways to fund things. Uh, the pandemic threw a little bit of a wrench into our financial planning and some of our capital assets, but the whole thing is what we're working towards right now. <clears throat> it isn't so much that we have something to do, it's like having leaders that will come in and help implement these things in a timely manner. We're one of the few districts that not only paid down all of our debt, uh, look at how we paid down uh, our pension liabilities. Find any other district that's uh, cut their pension liabilities in half because of the financial resources and the leadership of the district. But we have a plan. We just need people to implement it. And that's what the current board and the future board will be on the way to do. All right, Kirsten, how would you improve the infrastructure of the harbor? Thank you. Um, so I did write about this also on an article that I wrote about um, how important it is to complete the strategic plan and the facilities master plan. Um, and I know with community input, the Harbor Commission developed a 2019 draft strategic plan. Um, and I have the experience and the insight to help complete this important process, which is really important. We did um, strategic and master plans for the city of Menlo Park. And uh, I have that experience. And as part of the Har Harbor District's planning process, I am also committed to improving preparedness for sea level rise and other climate related emergencies. And some of the um, facility upgrades, I think the master plan must be completed, um, ensuring high quality modern facilities that serve the Lelises and the harbor users and the visitors in a safe, reliable, efficient, cost effective manner. And some of the infrastructure projects that need to be worked on are the Johnson Pier improvements, addressing ADA concerns, dredging and beach replenishment, fuel dock improvements, the coastal trail improvements, including the West Shoreline Trail restroom and parking lot, 
and installing EV car charge stations and other things that I wrote about in my article. Thank you. All right, and Virginia, how would you improve the infrastructure of the harbor? During my five years that I've been on the Harbor Board, I've been working on ensuring that capital projects are adequately funded and completed. Some key initiatives that I've been involved with are protecting the West Trail shoreline that creates natural barriers for rising tides, dredging and nourishing Surfers Beach, and improving green spaces in the, and adding bathrooms at Surfers Beach. But over the decades, there have been bigger storms and more sand improvement, which we, can, we predict will continue to happen. Therefore, financial planning and management is important. As a member of the Finance Committee for four out of the five years I've served on the Harbor Board, I've helped develop funding these projects as priorities so that they could be completed while adjusting the budget for COVID-19 risks and consequences. For special districts such as the Harbor District, having healthy reserves is important because most of our revenues are from property taxes. Therefore, I am pleased that on April 15th, through a meeting that had a lot of commotion, Commissioners Ryan, Matush, and I approved a new reserve policy that allows for the Harbor District to manage our finances based on the board's capital improvement priorities that were outlined and finalized in the strategic plan from 2019 when I was once again the board president. Therefore, I uh, look forward to using my financial background to help fund these projects that are important for combating sea level rise. Thanks. Thank you. All right, question number six. So for this one, we're going to start with Kirsten. Virginia, you're going to go second, and Tom, you'll be going third. Uh, Kirsten, how can you help to reduce dangerous bacterial levels in the Half Moon Bay Harbor? Um, that is an ongoing problem, and I think um, I also wrote about this, but the San Francisco Bay Regional Water Quality Control Board held a public workshop in 2019 for the Pillar Port Harbor and Venice Beach Bacteria TMDL. And that explore, explored a lot of ways to improve water quality. And I do endorse these, and I'm looking forward to working on these issues. Uh, but evaluating and improving the existing infrastructure, sanitary sewer lines and the septic systems, constructing stormwater treatment systems, measures to divert and clean runoff from the manure, upgrading Pillar Point's boat ramp restroom, controlling tree roots around sanitary lines, and measures to manage pet waste. Um, I think these are all good ideas and this project needs to move forward. Um, I think we also need to have a plan about educating the public about um, dog waste and making sure that there are more um, bag stations around to pick up after dogs. I have two dogs and I love walking them on the coastal trails and going to the beaches and they love going over there, but we need to make sure that we're always cleaning up and, and help educate people to understand that keeping things out of the storm sewer system is, going, is one of the best ways to keep the harbor clean. All right, Virginia, how can you help to reduce dangerous bacterial levels in the Half Moon Bay Harbor? Well, clean water has always been a high priority for the Harbor District and Harbor Board. The Harbor District has worked collaboratively with the Resource Conservation District for many years and has allocated $300,000 for the next three years or $100,000 per year to ensure that adequate testing occurs with legitimate results based on facts and science by testers who actually have science degrees and qualifications. San Mateo County has more state beaches and state parks than almost any county in California, so water quality is an issue that the Harbor District and Harbor Board take very seriously. One area of improvement that is needed is for all stakeholders to be committed to ensuring that clean water is a priority. The Harbor District has worked collaboratively with other public agencies such as the county and nonprofit organizations such as Sea Hugger. I am particularly proud of the collaboration with Sea Hugger when I was board president in 2018. Because of my relationships with various environmental groups and businesses on the coast, Sea Hugger approached me about developing a pilot program called the Sea Bin Project, which is um, where which is which cleans microplastics, macroplastics, and marine oil from the marine water and the harbor. The cost for each sea bin is about $6,000, and thanks to community donors, the Harbor District was able to develop this pilot project to help understand what kind of pollutants were in harbor waters and clean it up. The Harbor District has an opportunity to continue its, continue its collaborative work with other public agencies vis-a-vis -vis the RCD and nonprofits such as Sea Hugger to ensure that all stakeholders are doing their part to improve the water quality for our marine waters within the harbor and in San Francisco Bay. Thank you. All right. And Tom, how would you help to reduce dangerous bacterial levels in the Half Moon Bay Harbor? Actually, that's already underway right now. <clears throat> Many of the projects that Virginia just mentioned, but RCD, we've uh, 
got a plan for $300,000. Uh, sea Hugger program has been fantastic. If you haven't seen those, how successful it is, pulling litter and different debris out of the water. The ongoing projects also include digging up uh, parking lot and structure, tracing out uh, pipes. Uh, if you've been to the RCD presentations, you know about the fog, bat soils, and grease. There's pipes that have been dead-ended, broken, terminated. <clears throat> These things are in the process of being repaired. Uh, <clears throat> I was one of the people who was able to increase. It's not just dog litter. Driving down to the harbor at 3 and 4 in the morning, you see tons of raccoons. We've got thousands of raccoons that live in the sewer system. So it isn't just dog waste. You've got uh, many, a myriad of wildlife here. They don't have the facilities to increase the testing reagents to tell us what all the different mammals are. But it's a process that's ongoing and I support clean water. I've been a diver, a fisherman. It's important for all of us to experience clean water. Right. Now we're moving on to question number seven. So Virginia, we're gonna have you start with this one. Uh, Tom, you'll be going second and Kirsten, you'll be going third. So Virginia, how would you work towards helping the commission have calmer meetings that accomplish more? Well, it's a very simple question with a very short answer, sweet, short and sweet. The Harbor District or Harbor Board approved a code of conduct for Harbor Commissioners to follow in order to improve decorum at our meetings. Three of us, Commissioners Matush, Ryan, and I have signed and returned the pledge that we will honor the code of conduct, which essentially asks Harbor Commissioners to treat, con treat and conduct our treat each other and conduct ourselves in a respectful manner during Harbor Board meetings and when we are in public representing the Harbor District. I will continue to be the voice of reason and uh, continue to rise above the fray uh, and continue to conduct myself with the utmost, um, the, the highest level of integrity and honesty as I have done, which is the reason that um, I was appointed to the Harbor Commission in 2015 and the reason I was reelected or elected in 2016. Thank you. All right, Tom, how would you work towards helping the commission have calmer meetings that accomplish more? No, uh, the Harbor District has brought in consultants. And we've gone through full day seminars and we have an agreed upon pack of principles. And some of us follow those principles and some of us do not. <clears throat> I think that uh, this is an opportunity to put five people in a room together that don't have their own self-centered agendas <clears throat> and uh, work together for the Harbor District and make things happen in a far more reasonable manner. <clears throat> it isn't a question of one person doing something right. It's all of us working together <clears throat> and not letting uh, the squeaky wheel consistently get the grease. Thank you. And Kirsten, how would you work towards helping the commission have calmer meetings that accomplish more? Well, I have 25 years of experience serving on boards and commissions, and we have calm meetings and we accomplish a lot. And we always focus on the good work that we're doing for the public or for the nonprofit or for the agency that we're working on. And, and uh, it's not difficult. You come together, you work on your projects. If I'm on, I was on a city council for eight years. Um, we uh, worked on all sorts of different issues. We didn't always agree on issues, but that's okay. Um, we work professionally and collaboratively, and I think that's important. And always keep um, the public's agenda, the public's interest above anything else. And at the end of the day, um, when we vote on things and if we don't agree, disagree, if we disagree, that's okay. We move on. And I think it's important to be able to explain why you vote a certain way um, so that the public understands. I think when people understand why you're voting a certain way, that's helpful. But uh, this just hasn't been a problem on any boards or commissions that I've been on. They've been very collaborative and professional, and that's how I like to keep them, and, and I enjoy working with people that way. All right, thank you. So brings us to our last question, question number eight. We're gonna start with Tom, and then Kirsten, you'll be going second, and Virginia, you'll be going third. So Tom, if there is an agenda item or harbor issue pertaining to something that poses a conflict of interest for you, will you be forthcoming and recruit yourself proactively from the issue? Yes, and I've done that in the past. Uh, there's also been uh, various legal challenges to that <clears throat> about how to uh, avoid conflict of interest. 
in the past, I've used the harbor attorneys. Uh, we've discussed these things, if it might even uh, possibly be an issue, and I've conferred. I've always done what they've recommended. I've uh, recused myself when I felt that there was a conflict of interest. It's not an issue for me at all. All right, uh, Kirsten. If there's an agenda item or harbor issue pertaining to something that poses a conflict of interest for you, will you be forthcoming and recuse yourself proactively from the issue? Absolutely. There, there's just no question. That's what you do. That's why you have uh, legal counsel. If you need to discuss any conflict of issue, you bring it up, you discuss it, and you move on. It's not, it's not a problem. That's, I'm an attorney. That's why you have attorneys. You, if, uh, you know, we've had... Um, other people on council have conflict of interest issues and you just re we would rely on our excellent attorneys and uh, utilize their, their expertise and always follow it. I mean, there's no reason not to. And Virginia, if there's an agenda item or harbor issue pertaining to something that poses a conflict of interest for you, will you be forthcoming and accuse yourself proactively from the issue? An emphatic yes. Absolutely. There's no question about it. Any elected board is here to do the work of the people and there's no room for personal agendas. There's no room for unethical behavior. In fact, I know that having worked with Commissioner Matouche, he has willingly um, recused himself and I've had to step in to, uh, to run the meeting, such as the time when we were dealing with the Maverick Surf Competition permitting process. And uh, I was very glad that Commissioner Matouche willingly recused himself um, because he knew that he had a conflict. And, you know, I've never had a conflict of interest. I, I've, I try to stay, I always stay above the law as much as I can. And I mean, there's been no question about my integrity. We're here to do the people's work and uh, there's no room for personal agendas. So absolutely, yes, I would willingly and happily recuse myself. Thank you. All right, thank you all for answering the questions. Now we're gonna to move to our, uh, our final closing comments. Tom, we're gonna to start with you, and then Kirsten, you'll be going second, and Virginia, you'll be going third. For this final uh, outro, you each get three minutes to, to close the meeting. Uh, Tom, you have three minutes. As a candidate running for re-election again, I can uh, say that there's no one in the Harbor District that has the amount of experience uh, and time in the harbor on a day-to-day -day basis for the past 20 plus years as I have. As uh, Kirsten will, or Crystalline will say, yes, uh, he's been a member running his business of our Chamber of Commerce for over 20 years <clears throat> on the Ecotourism Board. Uh, <clears throat> the whole thing is uh, knowing where everything exists seeing what's changed, seeing what needs to be changed, being down there on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I'm actually the person that I think the public can absolutely count on to not only make the best decision, but to act in the best interest of the public, the fishermen, the leaseholders, and the tenants. <clears throat> That's part of the value that I bring in all the different uh, aspects of uh, volunteering on a couple of different nonprofit boards, working a business in the harbor, <clears throat> and helping other people's businesses grow, teaching people on a regular basis, informing the public of things that are going on, <clears throat> bringing new and fresh ideas from various uh, committees and groups that I also work with. So I would sincerely ask for your vote uh, in November for the District 4 seat for the Harbor District. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, Kirsten, you have three minutes to give your final comments. Thank you, and thank you so much for hosting this this evening. Um, it's a great community engagement tool, and I appreciate that. Um, I certainly would like to request your vote uh, on or before November 3rd for the Harbor District for District 5. Um, it would be an honor to serve you there. I think I have the background, the skill set to do so. Uh, please go to www.kirstenkeith.com to see more. Um, I will just say that some of my top priorities for the Harbor District are ensuring a strong in environmental stewardship, um, completing the strategic plan and the facilities master plan, enhancing public safety, and on my website I'd go into more detail on all these things, um, implementing facility upgrades, which I think is so important, including the Johnson Pier improvements, 
and ensuring fiscal responsibility and uh, managing the debt appropriately, developing a debt policy plan. I think finances are key because once we do a master plan, we're going to have to find the money to pay for the projects that we want to do. And keeping our eye on the ball on that uh, is going to be very important. Um, with the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority, like I said, we did a $76 million flood control project without um, the Army Corps of Engineers because we realized it was going to take too much time with them. So we had to work as a group together to come up with quite a bit of money. Uh, like I said, the phase one was $76 million. Uh, but it was well worth it and very important because it protects East Palo Alto from flooding and over a thousand homes from flooding. And so those are the kind of things, my skill set that I bring to the table to do this. Um, additionally, I am a water person. I have always been a water person. I'm a Pisces. I love scuba diving, swimming, love kayaking, have enjoyed going out to the buoys and seeing all the sea lions and the birds and the fish and the kelp. And I just um, think the coastside is a fabulous place to be. And I know so many of our residents in San Mateo County feel the same way. And of course, residents from other counties uh, farther east or wherever love to come to the coast side. Um, I love the fresh fish. Um, I'm actually a pescatarian, so I, I love fresh fish. Um, and I think I have, like I said, the skill set after serving on Menlo Park City Council for eight years, serving as a, a director on the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority for seven years, and serving on the Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency for seven years. Additionally, I served on our Menlo Park Planning Commission for six years, so I have a lot of uh, background in planning and, um, like I said, the strategic plans and master plans are going to be key. So please vote for Kirsten Keith for Harbor Commission for District 5 on or before November 3rd. Please go to kirstenkeith.com to learn more. And I've written several articles and posted my Coastside Families Taking Action. That's on there. The questions that they asked, um, daily post questions are on there. So you can see a lot more um, of my responses to um, organizations that have been requesting um, questionnaires and, and information. And I'm happy to share that, believe in transparency, and happy to work with everybody. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Kirsten. And Virginia, you now have three minutes to close your, your final thoughts. Thank you, and thank you to the Half Moon Bay and Coastside Chamber of Commerce for hosting this candidates forum. I'm very glad that we've had a chance to discuss our views. I've had the privilege of serving you since 2015 on the Harbor Board. I'd be honored to have your vote so that I can continue bringing stability to the Harbor Board and the Harbor District. As the only District 5 candidate to have a financial background, I will make sure that the Harbor District stays financially healthy during these tough economic times and prepare and plan to fund capital projects that mitigate the consequences of sea level rise, both at Pillar Point and at Oyster Point, things that I have already done and hope to continue to do. I will continue to be the voice of reason so that the Harbor District is a calm and productive workplace free of harassment. This has been seen as a huge positive for me since um, most of my endorsements have seen that I've been able to lead in this area, which is the reason I have the endorsements of Assembly Member Mark Berman, Assembly Member and Speaker Pro Tem Kevin Mullen, um, uh, Board of Supervisor Member um, Don Horsley, Supervisor Carol Groom, Supervisor Dave Pine, and Assembly Member Phil Ting up to the north because he understands how important South San Francisco is, just as Mark Berman understands the importance of Pillar Point and um, the need for um, the coast side to recover from these um, from the pandemic and the aftermath of the light CZU lightning fire. I will continue to focus on those business recovery efforts as well through these, these difficult crises. I believe that my steady leadership is needed now more than ever, and I humbly ask for your vote on or more before November 3rd. To learn more about my campaign, please visit my website, www.virginiachangkarali.com. Thank you so much for spending time with us, and I look forward to serving you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Virginia. So I'd like to say just that uh, small government is the type of government that affects us most directly and having an important, having an informed constituency is important to making the right choices. So uh, Virginia Chang Crowley, and Crystal Lynn, I'd like to also thank the Half Bay Coastside Chamber of Commerce for putting on this event. 
So thank you all very much. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thank good you. night. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Brian Shepard with the Half Moon Bay Coastside Chamber of Commerce. I'm joined with Chris Owen Geet, the Executive Director, and I am also on the Government Affairs Committee. We're here tonight for the candidate forum for the Mid Coast Community Council. We tried multiple times to schedule the forum. With the absence of a day that worked for everyone, we moved ahead in the hopes that they could find the time to participate in this process. The information to join this forum was sent to all candidates, but none showed up to participate. We encourage the constituency to research each candidate and make an informed decision. Thank you and good night.